In this lesson, I would like to show you how I block in my character, the colors of the background of the character, and how I light these. So this is basically the most important part of the painting. After this, there will be lots of refining, but this is the basis and the core of the pa painting. If this part works, then all is good. So let's start by turning off that color sketch. It's a reference for us now. I will start by blocking in my most important elements, first with one color. And for this, I always use my chalk brush. So I'm blocking in all my leaves. I'm doing this fairly roughly to start with and later we'll refine the edges. So now we can go in and erase with the chalk brush again and clean up those edges. So this is a little bit of a tedious process. I will do that in a minute. I will just show you which part of the drawings I also have to block in. So block in the character on a new layer. This is important, keep them separate. A warm, dark tone for the character. This is a little bit random, my block-in colors. I always tend to take red tones. Sometimes I already define my values a little bit as well with this, but I already have my guide in my color sketch, so I don't need that right now. The reason for this brush is simply the nice edges it gives me. I really like these edges. They feel like chalk. I like how these edges are frayed and they give me a slight traditional feel to my drawing. I, can, I will refine the character later. The last thing I want to block in is my flowers. If you want to adjust the colors, you can just go to the color, change it and pull it onto the color you want to change. So I will keep refining this a little bit and we'll show you the final result in a bit. This is the final block in for separating all my elements. I have cleaned up all the edges. And what you also can see here, I will show this to you. There is some smudged areas here where I just went into the sketch layer and smudged some of the lines. This is again the perk of working digitally, where I feel like the lines might be too much, where they're maybe a bit messy. I can just smudge them and it's not noticeable that in that way. This will all mix together, but where lines annoy me, I can just simply smudge them on my original sketch and annoy me anymore. From here, we will continue to block in the colors, the local colors, no lighting yet, just distributing colors. For this next step, I will import my color sketch so that it's not as if we did it and now it's gone. It actually has its use. I will open it in the reference window, which you can see here. You turn on reference and the first thing that happens, it will show you the screen you're working on. This is very useful too, but I don't need that at the moment. I click into the window and say image. So here I can import an image and get my color sketch. Now I will block in my local colors. I will go for mid-tones. I won't use the lightest colors. I will just sort of go for mostly mid-tones. For this, I use the watercolor brush and the gouache brush. So both of these I will probably be switching in between, depending on how opaque I want my colors to be. starting with the watercolor brush and let's go for the skin tone. No, that's not it because I don't have a new layer. Create a new layer on top of my character and my flowers are on both on one layer because they're not touching each other so it was fine to have both of these elements on one layer. But here I would like to create a clipping mask 
And now we can layer up with our colors. And I'm just doing flat colors here. And you can see the red, the dark red, shining through and giving us some texture. Maybe that will be a little bit too much later on. I might reduce it a little bit, but for now, I want to get all that texture. This is a fairly simple process. You just have to not stop painting. It has to be in one stroke. Well, basically, even if it isn't in one stroke, you can go like, okay, let's smudge that a little bit, and then carry on and smudge that. Then that breaks the texture a little bit. So in a way, I prefer to do it in one stroke. For that, you have to see the whole body part. You can't just sort of change the, around the position of the image. So you have to see the whole part. So always center the part you want to color. I'll add the dress, which is a sort of grayish warm tone. I will put a new layer on top of this. Again, set the clipping mask and do the same thing again. You don't have to be too precise. The beauty of these watercolors is that they kind of do emulate watercolor with their edges. And where I like having the edges there, I just sort of leave them in. And it's not that important that every part is filled out perfectly. I will paint over all of this at the end anyway. So no need for super perfect. But since it is on extra layers, I could just work like this, just being super rough and dirty. And now with the clipping mask already in there and then just go in and erase where I drew over the rest of the face. This wouldn't be possible if I didn't do it on a new layer because then I would be erasing the layer underneath. But this way I always have my colors separate. And once I'm done with all the blocking, I will merge these layers. You can merge layers by pinching them and then you've got all on one layer. But I will go back on that now and to just sort of keep going. Now we've got all our colors roughly blocked in. All our elements are, have a distributed color. I have added a gradient to the background. Here you can see the background blocked in and on top of which I have clipped to it first a dark green color and you can sort of smudge parts of it just like this sort of to create a gradient. And then I painted some more on top of it. And then I just can go in and again, smudge parts and the texture doesn't break. That's because it's clipped on. So I can just paint on it, smudge a little bit and it doesn't really matter. And that's why I think clipping stuff onto things is so important because when you're working with textured work, as soon as you smudge something, the texture is gone. But since it is on new layers clipped on, there is no texture in those layers, really. It's only relying on the texture underneath. So this is super important for the way I work. Next here, you can see how I finished blocking in the leaves, every one of them in a slightly different tone, my character and the flowers. Again, not too intense lighting because that will be the next step. But what I also need to still do is maybe add some little stones and this reflection. So by adding a new layer on top of this, I will paint some stones. We've got them already ready, roughly block in our sketch as well. I'll use the gouache brush, not the watercolor brush. The watercolor brush, when I do paint again on top of the it, it will give me a darker tone, much less than the, the gouache brush does. So I prefer to sometimes use the gouache brush instead of the watercolor brush, but the watercolor brush gives me nicer texture. So it's always a bit of a decision making here. I'm also reducing the opacity of this layer where the stones are because I want them to be slightly translucent underwater. If a color is too dark, you can just sort of now take the mixed tone, which is already there by putting on the too light color because it's already mixing in with the background. And that's often how I just add colors. Pick just a rough tone and like, okay, that's too light, but I can take that and then I will have a gray mixed tone. This is for me the fastest way to work. Okay, stones and also that light part. So I clip the stones onto the background layer as well. Now I'm going to paint this part. 
I'm trying to do this all in one stroke and maybe also add that second layer. But if not, I can erase parts of it and I will make it a little bit more transparent and clip it onto the water. And now that I get a gradient within this, I will erase part of it with another brush. I will also smudge it a little bit. Since we're still working on the textured level, I can smudge as much as I want and I want to because then I don't have these hard edges. Water often doesn't have them on all sides. So where you don't like your edges, just smudge them. So from here, we can now start with some lighting. This is the basis on which you, we will lay all of our light and I will go through it with you step by step. Now I would like to add some ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is shadow, which is in the creases the shadow where least light gets added to anything. It's just always there's an overlap like between things and that's always, that's the ambient occlusion. I, I always use this. This applies to any lighting situation basically because there's always parts where no light really reaches and I always start with that. And I do that by adding a new layer on top of my block in and I say it is multiplied and I clip it to my layers again. So I don't paint on the background, just on the character. And now we zoom in and start by picking the color, which is already there. I'm using the wash brush. Maybe I'll switch to the watercolor detail brush. This is something which I just jump around with. Both of them are good in their way. This skin tone is too extreme, but I usually set it to roughly 50% for this and then when we look at it it's actually kind of fine. If the shadow tone isn't quite where I want it to be then I adjust a little bit. I'm going a little bit warmer here so that has to be on 50% and now we've got a bit warmer skin tone and I do that because I like warm skin tones. For everything else it doesn't have to be that intense but for skin tones in the shadow I like them to be rather warm. And now I'm painting everywhere where light really has a hard time to reach. So like under the nose, maybe a bit under the eyes, then smudge it a little bit as well. That's too big brush. Yeah, smudge it a little bit. With this part, you can always smudge because you've got the nice texture underneath and it's getting multiplied into it. This edge here, this won't be getting that much light either. And I always try to work step by step. I start, try to work first on the body, then I do jump around. Because I jump around a lot, but I try not to, because it just doesn't make sense to change the colors all the time. And just go through it and say, okay, where does the light reach and where does it less? So under the skirt, it will be reaching less. Under the foot, it will be reaching less. Between the toes, I'm done with the skin roughly, so now I'm picking the dress. The light is coming from behind, but I'm sort of still ignoring that really. I'm going to also erase parts of the shadow where I don't like it. to have this a little bit darker than part of the dress hanging out because it's like her head is blocking a little bit of the light from the top and that's why I would like to have this part a little bit darker. Last but not least, the hair. For that I do use the watercolor brush because I really like how I can create hair this way. I select again the hair tone, the tone I want to paint on top of. And now just painting sections of the hair and I always leave some parts free which are like the reflective part of the hair. I will probably go on top of that later but now I'm already leaving these zones free and I really like how these watercolor brushes create these little edges which help me define these areas. So with this I'm done with the character. 
with the first shadow layer. And the same thing I really have to do for the background. I would add some edges to the leaves. For now, I will concentrate on the character. I will do all the steps first for the character and then go back to the background and work with the same steps for that. I usually jump around between character and background to get a good feel for the complete image. But just for you to keep it a little bit simpler, I will go through all the steps for the character and then tell you which steps will also go through the background and I will show you the, the layers on the background as well. 